All right. Hello. We're, we're here. We're here. This is this is I'm, I'm 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 done now. This is, this oh, is all, yeah, you're like that's it. You. I'm done. Passing the baton. Hello everyone. You are, look at you. You are the captain now. Oh god. You should not have done that. <laughs> captain Aldiano, lead us on this adventure. Hello everybody. Welcome back to first edition. Uh, Aetherite Radio's Final Fantasy XIV D and D podcast. I don't know. We'll shop that intro. I think that works. I right? like that. I like that. Yeah, that's, that's, gotta say it weird. without the question mark at the end. Next <laughs> time. I'll, I'll it. workshop. Damn it! Who we'll put a question that. mark in the teleprompter? Yeah, I just read whatever we put on it. <laughs> but yes, it has been a long time. So, the first thing we need to do is say, "Sorry about that. <laughs> it's been far too long." But let's get into a recap. Who are we? What are we doing? So first and foremost, ha, a joke there. Um, <laughs> we have our characters here. I would like to do a reintroduction of you guys first, right? Mm -hmm. So let's start with Fusion. All Aiden. right. So I, I play Who the, the fuck the, are you? <laughs> I play the boring yeah. ass here. Aiden Reed. <laughs> uh, he grew up uh, doing a lot of library stuff, a lot of reading practicing with like brooms and shit he's a dragoon wait what's your last name reed and R you read <laughs> r-e-e-d you got it you figured it out that's okay the, yeah right. well it's like if you Is go it? like it's a real world type thing like if you go back like people used to have last names that yeah. were indicative of like their professions okay yeah. and so no. <laughs> you come from like, a long lot a long line of book readers <laughs> that's yeah. what what you're saying i mean somebody, somebody has to upkeep that library yeah sure. and yeah. right is did you say double e double e you sure you I'm don't play that. an instrument not at all was it no, i just had that wrong i think <laughs> oh i'm pretty sure it was double e it's been a while but i'm pretty sure yeah. that's how i spelled my name um but yeah he kind of he grew up reading lots of books and wanted to be like a hero in the, in the books so uh Right. That's me. Also, I uh -huh. have a weird fixation with ropes. It's not kinky. It's just I find it. them useful. You just admitted it. Look, like. I I made I initiated a kaiju battle with with a chandelier guy because of the rope. <laughs> so is that your note about how he might be in the ropes? Yeah. Aiden, I also into BDSM. I say I also I, it was was it at our, our first first encounter? I blew a guy to death. Yeah, well, definitely. Yeah. That was the thing that happened. Well, don't worry, uh, new listeners, watchers. We'll get into that. Go back. Go back. Right. It's in the archives. Know. You can you Look. can you can find out first. You can watch firsthand <laughs> in real time as lie. I as I blow a guy uh -huh. to death. I'm not gonna lie. I do genuinely love the idea that he's this like you know reserved heroic like book librarian turned mm -hmm. hero, but who secretly this whole time has just been a wild freak in the shape. <laughs> Like, because all the actual real life librarians I know, that is 100% mm, right. true of. <laughs> so. Yeah. Playing to reality. I'm just saying. I mean, yeah, look, I have, I have access to that section behind the curtain. I mean. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go alphabetical order, at least in character name. I don't know. This is a weird way to go. Anyway, Merit. Rook, oh. could you tell us about Merit a little bit? Just kind of background. You don't, you don't have to recap, but if there's anything oh. you want to. Uh, yeah, I sure I can. Um, mm -hmm. Lolly bleeding hoe, everyone. I'm Merit. Oh, I like strong brews. I like bruising people as well. And I don't much care for, to be honest, when people make fun of my height. But I am a dwarf. And I'm proud to be one. And uh, I've got fine beard. Decorated with many, many fine pieces of jewelry. I don't much like talking about my past because I have done a few things and let's just say i once was a part of uh the brewers guild and they are declining currently to acknowledge me as such but still i am in spirit and uh hopefully we'll be getting back to it at some point but yeah that's me pretty much that's pretty much it <laughs> not maybe into ropes no or, oh no, no. confirm no, I'll, leave, okay. I'll leave that to the tall one Okay. Uh, I mean, you know, always up for a good time. I try something. I try. I try a little something. You know, I will try it. Maybe. Yeah, this not, this is not intro, but was it was it, were you, were you the one that bit the nipple, or was that twisted twisted, I twisted, twisted your the nipple? nipple? I did twist yeah. your nipple. Well, I got okay. <laughs> I got turned. I got <laughs> okay. Let me explain. <laughs> it's in the archive, everybody. Go back. 
we had to go on a stealth mission and uh -huh. I had took a shrinky dink potion and I got uh -huh. turned small and then I was in Aiden's, Aiden's little pocket while we were doing this stealth mission. No, 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 no. It was it was my retainer. Was? Wasn't it my Jerome? retainer? I had a I had a retainer yeah. for a little bit. Yeah. It was a stranger's nipple. It was a stranger's <laughs> nipple, but I was put in was Wow, in that was a phrase you just said. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I was put into his pocket, and I, I was there to listen while he posed as somebody to join a cult. And this is real stuff that happened. You can rewatch yeah. the episodes. You can get yourself mm -hmm. caught up. But in the midst of it, I had to get his attention somehow, now didn't I? So the only yeah. thing nearby was probably his nipple. And I stand by that, and that's what that's I fair. did. So. I see nothing wrong with that. Me neither. <laughs> no. logical. Makes sense. <laughs> so next would be Zumi. Hi! So talking about um, names that have to do with who you are, mm -hmm. that's not technically where my name came from, but it is out of character. Uh, Zumi Mao is my name, so like, mm -hmm. hyper cat. Yeah. That's, that's, that's what Zumi is. But hey, it matches the first mistel names, it you know? It does. Mm -hmm. I am lore compliant. Uh, yes, exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. Zumi Mao. Zumi Mao. Uh, Zumi is from a fishing village <laughs> mm -hmm. and uh she's a blue mage mm, that's where that whole fish spit junk that i talk about every other eighth ray radio episode comes from yeah sardine so. toss is renamed to fish spit. fish spit no one no one can dispute that that's mm -hmm. the name for it from now that's on that's what it is you're yeah. not tossing the fish you are spitting it it's true Play. i think i even did it one time already but yeah, she uh, she just wants to learn stuff. She likes things, and uh, she doesn't hold her liquor very well. Yeah, and we did also. learn. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did learn that. Yeah. Uh, uh, apparently, when she's drunk, she supplies weird animal facts. Like, did you guys notice that? Uh, what are they called? Gremlins don't have noses. It's good stuff. I did not notice that. No. Hmm. They don't have a. So her the stance on know. ropes, though, that's the most important question. Um, I mean, they're good for getting into places. Uh, yeah. Consent is key. Okay. Yeah, I, that's I, fair. I feel called fair. out. We haven't even actually like really started yet. Well, that's fine because we're starting now. Oh. Um, yeah. So let's go through a recap. So first and foremost, again, I'm gonna make this pun so often. Um, we started on the first around the timing of the 5.2 patch. And what happened in 5.2, you may ask, if you don't remember. Stuff well, in the sky exploded. Yeah, I think we all should be on that now that that worked. Yes. This is the first test. We're good? Yes. All right. So you all are adventurers, or you were at least burgeoning adventurers, starting out, standing in the Exedra on the day that a certain spooky man made the sky fall. Spooky man. Spooky man but let's not mention his name. Um, and you all saw the star fall and heard a voice. So from there, you decided, hey, let's be big damn heroes, right? And you were looking for someone to, well, at least a starting off point. And you found a message from a person named One Eye who had two functioning eyes, which is always annoying when you're, 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 you're like, your name does not match you. Uh, and he brought you guys into his hotel room, do you remember, over at the Catenary? Uh -huh, uh -huh. And he had uh, an alchemy set to make tea. Yes, exactly. That was the first weird thing about him, is that the center no, table... No, that was the second room. weird thing okay. about him. Okay, true. Named One Eye with two functioning eyes. I guess that's weird. I just, we're is making fun of me with the rope. This guy's name is One Eye. How is that not like... <laughs> No, Fusion, because his name is fine. It wasn't until later that we had Edgelord Boy, whose name we uh, mocked mercilessly for the entire true. episode. Edgelord so. Boy is coming up. <laughs> mm. But One Eye uh, seems to be some sort of adventurer, at least at the beginning, this is what you knew. Some sort of adventurer looking for a team. Um, he was really, really annoyingly stoic, let's say. Uh, I remember you guys not liking him at all at first. Has that changed? Yes. Yes, yeah. I think we've come around with him. I feel yeah. like we had some bonding moments when we went down to the sure. sewers a little bit later. Yeah. Sure. Or, or later, around the campfire, when uh, you guys woke me up yelling, and then I made him tell me all about his dream. <laughs> right. So, 
from there, you found out that there was some spooky stuff going on under the Crystarium, um, and some people were missing. Uh, there are apparently storage rooms down there. So you went down to the Horatorium boat launch. Once again, I'm hoping that all these transitions work. Yep, they're, um, they're, they're good. <laughs> yes, crispy. Production. Um, and I'm you hungry. Got... Oh, no, I shouldn't have said crispy. <laughs> now I'm hungry. But you guys delved into the Undercroft. I just want to name it the Undercroft. There is no official name, but let's go by Undercroft, maybe? Undercroft's good. I like it. It's okay, fancy. Okay. I feel yeah, strong yeah, about yeah. it. It tells yeah, yeah, you yeah. where it is under. It tells you what it is. A croft. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's good. good. Yeah. So you delved down into these caverns. Uh, you found some uh, people who may or may not belong to a cult. Do you remember much about that first encounter? That was the one where I blew a guy to death. Yeah. Yes. I also it pummeled a... someone. I, I oh, raged yeah. on someone real hard. I remember that, too. Yeah. You destroyed them with a hammer. Uh, <laughs> I remember one of them being so afraid of you that they walked back into the the little make to uh make do a jail cell that was down there i'm terrifying yeah. i'm terrifying yep. yeah it's all in the beard right well yeah because we those uh various people that had been moving goods in and out were mm -hmm. disappearing down there right yeah. and then um because they use the waterways to transport stuff in and out of the chrysarium mm -hmm. right yep. and when we went down there exploring we discovered that there were a bunch of creatures that were like of unnatural size as though magic had been affecting them right. and we found these cult members that had uh kidnapped and or killed various people and we fought them uh to try and free those who still remained correct right yes that is that is everything uh there were some bats you know, normal I things. Talked to them. Yeah, you did. And you kept them from killing you. That was a good thing. I like um, that. <laughs> yeah, that was good. It's a, it's it's a, a good, it's a good life skill to have. Uh, this is where you met Jorel, uh, your retainer. Oh, that's right. Uh, Aiden. Because yeah. he was one of the people down here uh, working for the cult, but he was just working for money. It was just a day job for him. Um, I still don't trust him. Yeah, well, you know. But I did teach him me. a dance. That's right. You did. I think mm -hmm. that we, we offloaded him, at, I think, later, too, didn't we? Yes, you did. Yeah. Keep track of your own yeah. retainer. Gosh. <laughs> this is why I want to go through, because it's just going to generate all Look, this it's, talk. It's been a while, okay? So when you got back, you dropped him off with the guard. You talked to him a bit. You found out that, hey, he was recruited from a village north of Lakeland. Um, called Doniger. I just have to find my North Lakeland. There we go. And you also found out that this cult, the Nightshades, are recruiting people who are down on their luck to do some indeterminate work, you know, probably illegal, from this village. Um, and Jarrell told you that they're recruiting here and they seem to have some presence at a lumber mill. And this is, uh, while in Jarrell's pocket, this is where I twisted his nipple. This, this, this is where the nipple incident occurred. So that yeah. Everybody knows yeah. where that fell on the timeline. So. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, the nipple's coming up. Uh. <laughs> no, keep it in. Keep it yeah. in. Yeah, you know, that's right. You know, uh, I, don't, I don't know where to I'm go. Just imagining that. Just like this, this timeline now. Like, yeah, so stuff happens. Nipple. <laughs> kaiju fight. <laughs> <laughs> But yes, this is where you made the plan because you didn't want to want Jarrell to go in alone, right? You wanted him to go talk to them, but you didn't want him to go alone. So you went to Spagyrix, uh, which is a real word for a real place in the Crystarium where you find alchemical supplies. Um, and you requested a shrinking potion, but I do remember that you now have a contact for an enlarging potion. Also, didn't we have one of those also already? We, we, that was yes. that was the kaiju. Yeah, that yeah. was we, we used <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. So, you know, you just you wanted to be able to go in both directions, right? So this is where the plan was formulated to shrink Merit down, put her in a pocket and have her just kind of watch this interaction. Yeah, you know, he, yeah. Was, he was on a stealth mission. He was going undercover to try and mm -hmm. see if we could get more information from these mysterious cult recruiters to figure out like where we could find them or what their goals or motives were. And so I logically did a little bit of merit in Wonderland, got shrinky dinked, <laughs> and you know had to do what I had to do in his uh, shirt pocket. While I love merit in Wonderland. 
<laughs> well, because we had the small and large version. Yeah. I won't, I won't pull you guys into the inn, but you went up to an inn called the uh, Golden Table up in the village of Doniger. Um, and yeah, Jarell was kind of scoping the place out for a cult contact, but he ran into an old, let's say, business partner named Laswin, who uh, gave him a little bit of a hassle. Um, you guys found out through both Jarell and Laswin that, yeah, the cult is recruiting, and they are using the lumber mill um, as kind of this front, maybe to also make money. Um, and then you guys got invited to the lumber mill three different ways. Do you remember that? Like, you're all like, yeah, we have to infiltrate it. So you all found three different ways to get invited. Yeah. Overachievers. We like That's to cover all our bases, you know what I mean? And then tie them up with rope. Yeah. Well, like, one of us ah, yeah. was invited, one of yeah. us, like, rudely invited themselves, and yeah. then one of us we'll got nicely sneak. invited? I don't I actually yeah. don't remember how I got invited. Did, did I just sneak? Stealthed. Yeah, Somebody you're going to sneak. Somebody stealthed in. Yeah, okay, it, okay, okay. Yeah. Was it Fusion? You had to, like, jump up into the rafters to sneak <laughs> in or something? No, Fusion definitely rudely got invited. Yeah, oh, okay. but mm. he did jump up to the rafters yeah. because Dragoon! Right, I do. Yeah. I do remember failing a jump and just landing next to a guy. <laughs> yes. Didn't I? I looked like somebody. You look like that one right. of the cultists. Yeah. Yeah. That's how you yes. snuck in. Yeah. What are the dudes we yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. Right. So oh, it was Merit know. who bur bullied herself into the meeting. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's right. Was. That sounds I'm not about right. Surprised. I think it was a mix of bullying and persuasion. Intimate yeah. and persuasion, if I remember. Bullsuasion or well, that's what it was. He was the sneak. I you were the bully, thing. and I was the liar. <laughs> <laughs> bullsuasion, also bullshit. <laughs> I specialized in both of them. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so, uh, unsurprisingly, there was a fight. Uh, surprisingly, there was a very large Yate Veo that was glowing menacingly. Uh, yeah, so because we're using game terms and not game terms, Yate Veo is one of those weird reflasias with the whippy tendrils. Big old uh, plant big. thing. Oh, chew buddy. It was and very big. Yes, much like the creatures that we had encountered down in the tunnels mm -hmm. had been like expanded to kaiju size. Yeah. Um, and this is where you enacted the plan to make your monster grow. Uh, and you picked one eye, which was a good idea. Because he's kind of kind of defensive. Uh, you learned that. Yeah, I just I needed I needed to channel mm -hmm. my inner Rita, you know? Yes, exactly, right. Uh, and I believe this is where uh, Aiden uh, hogtied a person, maybe yes. strung them up over a rafter. I do remember that. I, yeah, I definitely, I did, I definitely, no, no, it was, I, 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 uh, I tied up one eye, because one eye was, yeah, was kind of chomping at oh, the bit yeah. a little bit. One eye yeah. is a person. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> yes, he is. Uh, and then, and then at that point, I think, I, uh, I gave, gave him the embiggening potion, and then, like, dropped uh -huh. him down on, on everybody. I think that's yeah, how that happened. Did. I made a chandelier out of him. Yes, and, uh, I distinctly remember that. That Yate Veo was about to do a bad, bad thing, and someone, I believe it was uh, Zumi, snuck in from behind and stole the kill. It was a total kill steal moment, uh, but it was necessary. I believe chat has correlated that that was a glorious fish spit moment as well. It was. It was. It was. Fish spit for victory. <laughs> uh, I don't know about you guys, but I don't want to get exploded, so. Yeah, you know, that's not, I don't know. I, I don't want to explode in that way, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but after that battle, uh, you met maybe the regional leader, uh, some higher up lieutenant of the Nightshades. Do you the remember worst his name? guy ever, the Nightblade. Really, just the worst. <laughs> the <laughs> Nightblade. Oh, it is just the Nightblade. Yes. Yeah, yeah. That's yeah. That, that All is, right. That is uh, perhaps name, perhaps title. Not entirely sure. Maybe both. Uh, he definitely enjoys it. Um, that, that's his favorite thing about it. And you talk to him a little bit um, about, hey, you know, what are you doing? Uh, he was really evasive and, and very kind of, uh, uh, let's say, mesmerized in some way. Do you remember what he wouldn't stop saying? He had this Something about thing. 
those with weak convictions. Yeah, exactly. There was some some like tagline, maybe even like the motto, maybe of the nightshades. Um, but yeah, he was really fixated on that, and he would not really give um, in the interrogation, other than to call the Crystarium a fool's prison, and they're gonna take everyone out, and you know, indeterminate, uh, strange threats. Um, but he also did have a couple of maps. Uh, one map of the Ostal Imperative, which is that outpost uh, kind of close to Ilmeg in Lakeland, and then one of Laxenloft, that abandoned castle uh, in the center. Um, and they look like maybe some sort of movement maps. Uh, you could see that there were arrows and, and X's and things like that. Um, but after the battle, you started to return back through uh, North Lakeland. That's uh, where yeah, you remember, Zumi, you had a conversation with One-Eyed. You remember how you that went? You want to make an adventurer's guild, and I said, that's so cute. <laughs> right, you were drunk at the time. I was. No, I was sleepy at the time. Oh, that's right, right. It was yeah. sleep. Okay. Yeah. It's like, and, it was some. He and Aiden were yelling at each other for something. I woke up yeah. Zumi. He's like, okay, so like, what are we talking about? And he's like, I want to be a guild master, make a venture guild, help people. And she's like, that's so cute. It's, that's exactly how he said it. <laughs> and then he added yeah. an uwu. Um, yeah. yeah, he did. It's very weird, but mm -hmm. I like this direction you're taking his character. Yeah, little, little Ooh. strange, but you know, like you got to have that pivot point, right? And then you have that heel turn. Mm -hmm. um, he's talking about to roll it back. The Nightblade was talking about like a crystal something. Yeah. Like a crystal under the crystarium. Imagine that. Yeah, there, there's some sort of uh, source of energy that they're after under the Crystarium. Um, you know, to give a little bit of backstory, just to make sure we, we know what we got from him. Basically, he said that the Crystarium's a fool prison, a uh, fool's prison. The Shadow Keeper is coming back. That's why the night is here. It's finally our time. He also mentioned hearing something of a voice himself. That was the weirdest thing from him. Kind of similar to you guys, as you had that starfall and hearing a voice. He remembers hearing a voice as oh well. Oh my god, he got Essiend. Yeah. Hey, he could be a warrior of light, right? Warrior of darkness. No. He wants dark. It's weird. It's complicated here, right? Um, but yeah, so it seems that the Nightshades are in open uh, rebellion against the Crystarium. They don't like it. They want the area back. They want to usher in infinite night. Because, I mean, we just had infinite day. It should, it should eventually go to infinite night, right? To keep the balance. Yes, no? Probably. That's how it works. Yeah, um, for debate, don't know. <laughs> yeah, but uh, the Nightblade is currently in jail at the Crystarium. You dropped him off with the guards towards the end of our last session. That's true, so that's true. Yeah. I uh I learned from my midnight chat with one eye why he's called one eye. Did you? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. This is a sword of sword. It's broken. Right. His uh the guard on his hilt um is kind of a beetle. Um and it's just cut. Uh a portion of it is cut off and it looks like it has one eye. Now that is a good theory. He did not confirm nor deny. Yes, he but... did. <laughs> But yeah, so uh, I believe you guys saw an echo, correct? Yeah. yeah. You remember that echo of him, uh, one eye, this character running through kind of this desert um, plain, running away from someone who looks strangely familiar, an older man, uh, long beard, kind of martial arty, maybe has a dragon. We're not sure exactly yeah, how that right. dragon works. Um, yes, he was being chased by Ranjit, and you saw him fall to Ranjit. You don't know why he was running. Uh, you don't know why Ranjit was after him. Ranjit won, that's for sure. Um, and you didn't really talk too much about the, uh, the flashback, just when I experienced it with you. So I think he probably knows that you know. Um, but yeah, then you return back to the Crystarium. Uh, you drop the Nightblade off with the guard. And here's where I control the vertical and the horizontal. Please do not adjust your television sets. I'm taking control of time, and that's where we're going to start. Um, we're going to start right after you drop off the Nightblade. 
and you're going to return to one eye's room but as any good second chapter has let me hit you with that patch art no i love the idea of patch note format so yeah you can treat this as the first edition moving. yeah first edition chapter one the remnants of valor Sounds cool. Well, I got I have like goosebumps. <laughs> well, I'm glad that you like. It. Uh but yeah, we'll start off in one eyes room. So you guys return from the guard. Uh one eyes door there is open. It's th this picture's not accurate. One day maybe I'll take pictures of like an actual room. Maybe I'll try and do that. No, I'm too lazy for that right now. Um as you return, you notice that. Uh, on his table, gone are the alchemical supplies, now replaced with many, many neatly stacked piles of some sort of paperwork. Not entirely sure. There's some sort of order to it, probably, but not one that you can glean. Uh, kind of interspersed with it are the maps that you retrieved from the Nightblade. Um, also, you notice that there are two more people the normal here. And I think we talked about this a little bit as we ended before, but just as a uh, reintroduction here, there are two drawn, a male and a female. Drawn are all raw. On the first, I just wanted to remind people because I need fair. to remind myself all the time. That's fair. <laughs> Literally have a cheat sheet with the names. Um, I two wrote drawn. it down and I still didn't remember what it was. <laughs> Funnily enough, like I forget it's the tab that has the book in Foundry. There should be a listing there that says the first peoples. If you click on that, Thank and you. I'll, yeah, if you click on that, it'll have the back and forth. Uh, so that'll be a good way to look it up if you need to. Cheat, but cheat, cheat, cheat. yeah, I'm going to try and do a lot more of that. So these two people, a uh, male and a female drawn, are looking to uh, they look to be helping uh one eye right now he is sitting at his desk behind that stack of papers as you come in so how do you want to come in how do you want to return heroes didn't we uh -huh. so, so are you backing us up a little bit yeah just a little bit okay yep i have control of time i'm gonna kick the door open no no <laughs> i'm not gonna, gonna kick the door open okay yeah. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> In character for both of you. Yeah. <laughs> We're going to kick the door open together. Oh, yes. Aw, friendship. Merit, Merit, Merit <laughs> kicks in, in in the gnome size, like kind of like doggy door, walks through, and then Zumi <laughs> kicks in the whole door. <laughs> okay, it's so a, we, it's a double door, right? I mean, there's yeah, two it doors. Is. Yeah, there's yeah. two sides. Yeah, we could, yeah. we could like really dramatically throw open either side. I mean, I assume throw we wide the gates. Walk And then I close both doors and just kick them in again <laughs> to get my own door kick entrance <laughs> so we so we pretty much came we what came back from there dropped him off and mm -hmm. dropped him off in prison and then came straight to what? one ice room okay yep. so we probably haven't had time to rest right no not at all all right i'm very crappy then um i do <laughs> i do go up to the door uh -huh. and um thunk my hammer down on the ground and then just like whip, 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 whip. <laughs> like hit it as hard as possible <laughs> all right well uh at the door uh it's opened by someone you do not know uh they are a drawn uh they are female um what'd you do to what i <laughs> is that what you say immediately yes all right uh, she kind of is taken aback, like, wait, who are you? What? So she just kind of stops at what, unless you, uh, in no, you interrupt really, her? Okay. At that point, at that point, just like, when I, you in there? <laughs> Scream once if you're alive. You okay? <laughs> Scream you twice if you need help. Uh, just, just let them in. It's fine. They know me. Um, and she kind of ushers you in. As you come in, you notice that she is wearing um, kind of more traditional, fairly Eastern-ish looking clothing um, with a similar color style to One Eye's um, kind of normal garb. 
that are there, blue and yellow. Are there any beetle motifs anywhere on her garments? Hard to say, but yeah, there's definitely, you know, if, if you're looking out for it, you can definitely tell that um, there are some kind of at the edges of sleeves. Uh, pretty you well guys, monogrammed. I think this is one eye's wife. Remind remind me is <laughs> yeah. is is one eye a, a drawn as well? Yes, one eye is a drawn. Yeah, you know I can give it a, a description of him as you come into the room. So one eye is sitting behind the table, uh, kind of towards this window that we all know is there because we all know exactly what in room this is. Let's not let's not lie. I definitely stole this from the in room at the Crystarium, but. Maybe nobody even knows that. Like, I go there so often that I think that people know what this room looks like anyway. Um, at the table is One Eye, who is a kind of current purple of skin tone um, drawn, who looks to be kind of late 40s, maybe early 50s. It's kind of harder to tell, right? Um, he is sitting at this desk. He is wearing kind of more stately garb than you've seen him in before. Um, you know, not quite like ornate or anything, but it's definitely something that you could tell was manufactured by someone with skill. You know, it's not like um, uh, any sort of process thing that you can go pick up anywhere. Um, but yes, store. yeah, it's not it's not quite made for everyone. Um, but as you come in, he, he kind of welcomes you and he says, uh, how did it go with what was his name? Night played. Night played. <laughs> Let me tell you, the amount of times they kept asking for his first name, and I said, no, really, it's just the. <laughs> That's what he told us. Person, but he's locked away, so good job hanging from the ceilings. Getting they almost, they almost kept my rope. Back. I had to really fight to get my rope back. It's like they don't I care about personal property. I just kind of shakes his head at that one. It's It's... It's probably do you did they give it back? No, yeah, no, I got it back. It's oh, okay. It's it's right here. Well, I'm, I'm glad for you. Uh, and he kind of you know just is taken aback at remembering everything that just happened. Hey, uh, you look fancy. <laughs> oh, well, you have to look the part, don't you? And he okay. kind of gives you a wink. Right, uh, since you talked about it. Oh, okay, okay. The drawn that answered the door. Um, yes. What what kind of uh, physical features uh, sure. does she have? She shares a similar skin tone, um, very similar. She uh, has kind of shoulder length black hair. Um, you know, she has, of course, the typical horns forward facing. Um, she is, of course, a bit more diminutive just because of the way, though she you definitely get the idea that she is at least somewhat of an athlete due to her build. You guys, I think this might not be his way. <laughs> I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and seem to be like uh, 20s. Definitely. I'm going to I'm going to just uh, look at him. Look at her and say, uh, you never told us you had a sister. And he just, he says, I don't, I don't have a sister. Daughter. You're going to keep guessing, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You just want to tell us? We are related, but it's, it's Cousin. more. Cousins. Yes. They're, they're, yes. That Got explains it. why you're all dressed up and you're filling out the paperwork. You can get away with marrying a cousin, but anything a little closer than that, it's usually a little frowned upon. Ew. Uh, he, what he... in the blazes? <laughs> Seven hells. Aiden, what in the hell? I'm so sorry <laughs> about him. I apologize. You he, hear. You know, it's been a big You know how many him. books about family trees I've read about? You hear someone completely bust up laughing in the other corner. Uh, the male drawn that you notice that is in here now, similarly wearing similar clothes, similar skin tone. Um, this person is definitely some sort of athlete, though. They are bulky um, enough to make the garb that they're wearing look a little strange, honestly. Um, um, Merit definitely is looking at them and then looking at herself to size up whose muscles are more impressive. Oh, yours definitely are. His are just at a scale larger. You know what I mean? Like, it's sure, just yeah. you would notice because tall, sure. right? 
I but... flex a little bit just to <laughs> confirm that. Just yeah, to like you... really make my presence known. In yeah, you know, like, uh, do I want, yes, you know what? I want the first roll to be something absolutely ridiculously <laughs> stupid. Let's do this. I want you <laughs> to give me a perception. Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Um, Can I also you know do what? a perception for something yeah, Absolutely, else? yeah, yeah. Um, you sure so I can't go the, insight on this? Can I get insight? Yeah, you know what? <laughs> no, which, the, whichever you think. If you can tell me why insight would be better than perception, and let's, and I'm well, fine I'm with that. To, I'm trying to get insight on his muscles. What are we sure. angling for here? What's Muscle the, insight. What's the... <laughs> so instead of like just looking at physically, you're also trying to take a, you know, insight into his demeanor, how he's standing, sure. if he's, you know, I want to know, like, if he lifts, bro, you know, yeah, like, exactly. I want to know more about the context, yeah. like how he got these muscles. And Insight is fine for that. Net oh. <laughs> wow. Excellent. Whoa. I have a you, you know their that. entire <laughs> training regimen. You just like, I've seen muscles like that before. Like I haul kegs ev like every day of my it's life. True. So. Um, so with that large insight, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll go into it. So. As you're looking at them, they are definitely built like they lift, bro. Um, but you also can tell that it is unfocused, maybe. They aren't really standing in a particular stance. They actually really look uncomfortable in these clothes. Um, but you can definitely tell that they take care of their physical appearance, but they don't look like they're actually anyone who uses that, let's say. You look them up and it's down like and you're like, hmm. That's doesn't for show. Use it. Okay, like it's actually yeah. for show. Or yeah, it seems like it's for show. Okay. Like, like not if Conan the Barbarian was wearing a tuxedo, you're like, that's not yeah. something's off here. Yes. All bluster, no actual skill, kind yes, of. Yes, that's what it seems like to you. With that twenty, you can tell that that person has never been in a fight. No way. Absolutely no way. There's okay. no dirt under those nails. Okay. No. All right. All right. All right. Merit kind of good. like. Kind of like hands on hips, like, hmm, all right, all right. Uh, if you ever want to fight someone for real, I'll do it. Uh, he was laughing, you know, trying trying to hide it a little bit. Uh, and then as you say, if you ever want to fight anyone, he abruptly quits laughing and looks away. Like, oh, shit. <laughs> Mar Marin, like, just shrugs, it's like... I mean, I'm just saying it seemed like a friendly sort of thing to say. It seemed like a friendly <laughs> thing that you would offer to one another. It's nice to meet you. Who are, and you, and you, and she points at the woman that they don't know yet. I'll marry. Sure. Uh, so, Zumi, what was the perception for? What did you want to see? I was going to see if, if I could see uh, if Merit was flexing. <laughs> oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. You see okay, her so... kind of straighten up. <laughs> Merrick catches you looking, looks at you, winks. <laughs> <laughs> she goes, have you been working out? Always. Every day of my life. Thank you for noticing. <laughs> at all times. It's good. Um, when you ask, who, who are you, uh, to the woman, uh, one eye interrupts and says, these are relations of mine and the guy in the corner pipes up and says, he's our cousin. We're from Yulemore. I needed a job. And, you know, one eyes just kind of like, stop talking. Uh, <laughs> and uh, he introduces Me too! Them. I also needed a job too! <laughs> uh, let me... One sec. Everything stop for a moment. There we go. Uh, he introduces them as Lindel. Um, that's the male. And Lithani is the female um as extended family that wanted to see the world a little bit more um and once again lindo pipes up in the corner and says there's nothing to do in yulemore you can kind of hear this bratty snotty vibe from him oh poor baby oh <laughs> you have nothing to do in your rich town full yeah. of food oh and that's probably the meanest thing you've ever heard Zumi say. Oh, do you, do you actually say that out loud? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you you your character has a history with Yulemore, correct? Like at least you yeah. were from somewhere around there. So mm -hmm. I mean, it makes perfect sense. Uh, he once again shuts up pretty quickly, but he he definitely stares some haughty daggers back at you. Kind of a hmm, how dare you? 
Um, but he, he stops. Uh, he stops that snotty tone. Uh, but when I says they're just here to help for a while, um, I need help trying to find out what's even going on. And you know, he he gestures at the entire table. It seems like everybody. Everyone who is in the guard quit at exactly the same time to be adventurers. Like, I, and he just is flabbergasted. You can tell that he's a bit flustered since coming back. That's weird. If they want to protect people, why don't they stay guards? Glory. That's all when I says with a question mark. I mean, I why aren't you guards? <laughs> I mean, I wasn't a guard to start with, you know. Didn't Fair already point. have that that job. Uh, I want to I want to get a look at uh, mm. all the papers that he's got laid out yeah. and, and see what's on them. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, roll me an investigation. Oh, I double clicked it on mistake. Oops. Oh, it's fine. We'll go. We'll take. I guess take the first one. Yep, first one is good. So twenty two. All right. So as you're looking through the papers, you're like, uh, please the first one. <laughs> I mean, I was yeah. going to say the first one. It just happened that that yeah, was the higher way. one. I just... Yeah, I always take the first one either way. Yeah. Yeah. That makes um, sense. yeah. So as you're looking through, trying to get a glimpse of them, you can see a lot of ledgers of missing goods or missing people. Um, but you also see um, there's quite a few letters of resignation. You don't know how one eye has these like why they're even in piles in front of him like where did he get his hands on these from the guards um you also see uh the maps that i was mentioning before that you got but right beside them are maps that one eye has sourced um some of them you notice are um very old older than you know you have seen in a long while probably from the cabinet of curiosity um you being the one most likely to know how old they are you know, considering your research history. Uh, they look to be before the Flood of Light, um, but they're, you know, kind of worn. Um, but he's cross-referencing, at least it seems that he's cross-referencing this with the old uh, maps. Uh, also on the table are um, other contracts, which is probably shouldn't just leave those out. Um, you can't really tell exactly what they are, but it looks to be a lot of purchase orders. So that's what you can glean from that investigation. Um, but after, you know, one eye says, you know, why don't you guard? He kind of backs off a little bit. You can tell he's in a bad mood. And he says, I, I, I'm sorry. It's just, I knew that as soon as I started this, we, there'd be an influx, but I didn't count on this. Um, it's going to take me, quite a while to get around to cross-referencing these maps for you. I have a couple of people from Yulmore that can help. But it's going to take some time. Now, I know that this cult is a huge deal, and I, I really want to help with this, but I think we're kind of at a dead end. And he just kind of looks at you to see if you agree. Merit squints. A dead end? We've got two leads. What? There's supposed to be two whole places that seem to be of interest to them. Seems to me we could just get ourselves there. I hope I don't have to go small like and be tweaking anybody's nipples again, but I mean, you know, I'll do it if I have to, if it's the adventure in life. Mm -hmm. But I mean, Aiden, you've got, what is it? All the knowledge with, um, with all the paper, the books and things. <laughs> so he could also, can't you just cross-reference it? You spent a long time doing that, couldn't you? So if you need to research some things or look at some of the stuff of the world before, you could do that, right? I mean, I don't, I don't see why I couldn't uh, take a closer look at some of these maps. I'm sure I'd recognize okay. at least a couple of them. Yeah, what I is, you know, oh, well, if you can do it, you can go over to the Cabinet of Curiosity. You can take the maps. I've already talked to Morin. Um, he, he thought that I was coming, but that's fine. You know, I, I, I can't, I don't know when I'm going to be able to get out of this room, but there are a couple of things that I think you might want to help with. Um, mostly because I can't pay you yet. That's another thing I wanted to talk oh, about. Oh, I gotta go. I, 
He's, Wait, one he second. I'm sorry. What was that? I spe My mind went black for a second, completely blank. You can't pay us? Uh, not quite yet. I mean, you were paid for the job, right? You were, that, that job. Yeah. Then we looked into this, and now we're doing that. However, that's about all the money that was easy for me to get. He, he's choosing his, voice, his words very carefully. You can tell that. Uh, at this point in time. So, if you want equipment for the search, um, you know, I have a couple of leads uh, in town that you could go talk to them and that they're paying. You can see he's uh, kind of floundering a little bit. Have you ever heard of the phrase, the shirt off your back? I don't think it would okay, fit. Okay, well, your shirt's very fancy, and you could sell that. He kind of, you know, thinks about it for a moment, and he says, technically, it's, it doesn't belong to me, but I get what you're saying. What? What? And he, he just says that... It's, it's a rental. He is marrying the cousin. Stop. Stop. I was stop. right. Stop. It's like, I, <laughs> we are from money. Yes, were from money, but that's not true anymore. So this is what remains. So this one over here, never done anything really productive in his life, and she's pointing at the, the muscle boy. Just like... You see when I kind of nod along, but try, try and keep that really under wraps. <laughs> He's here, I'm guessing, because what, they couldn't keep up their lifestyle in Yulemore? Yes. All right. Merrick kind of, she looks very on the fence. She looks at the <laughs> other two. It's like, what do you lot think? I mean... You can buy into something, you know, you can invest in it, in a sense. You can hope it'll pay off in the end, but I, I mean, I have to say, I don't usually work for nothing. It's not, it's not for nothing. You know, he, he continues to think, it's for money, it's just not for me. Uh, and I found it for you, and I'm not charging any fees to, to find uh, jobs. Yet. My notes say that you were going to pay us more because we finished this. <laughs> yeah. He was. This is true. But he's not. There's I... two things. Sorry. Yeah. <laughs> go ahead. Go ahead. I thought you were a good, honest guy. I thought we really had become friends and you wouldn't lie to us about this stuff. And now you are? Well, it wasn't a lie. I just didn't know of the situation completely back home. What does it have to do with you? Didn't they kick you out? He thought they were going to fund him, right? You thought they were going to fund you. I thought I would be able to uh, source the money we need, yes. Mm. So what happened? And she looks at the other two. Uh... <laughs> Lindell is trying not to look in any, like, anywhere close to you. She just um, walks right over to him and, like, <laughs> picks his face up, like, what happened? <laughs> as, you, as you get over it, you know, he, he will allow you to, to, to get close and, and touch, but then he'll, he'll kind of, you know, kind of get back a little bit. Um, what I brace in, he says, it's just, there are other uh, priorities there, obviously, and I was unaware of how little the family name meant anymore. What priorities? Aren't the priorities of Yulmore give us all your money and we take care of you for the rest of your life? Well, not anymore. What? Yeah, that's... That's changed a bit with the change of management. They're... They, they're trying to rebuild, right? You know, they, they're turning over a new leaf, and it turns out leaves require money sometimes. He kind of notices that that didn't work as a saying. Uh, but 
let's maybe just on say the source, but we don't have leaves here. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> let's just say there's there's a and he he looks a little crestfallen. There's a better use for that money right now. And that's where it's gonna go. Merrick mm -hmm. actually seems satisfied by that. Merrick goes, the world's changing. You wondered about the gods, why they all left? I mean, world's bigger than we thought. All of us thought we could only live in one small place. Probably die soon. Probably get turned into something soon. Our whole world was that. I mean, it's different now. I understand. But I will say this. And she, like, suddenly gets much more intense. She's like, yeah. two things I can't stand in this world. One, piss poor alcohol. Weak. <laughs> Thin. Runny. No flavor. Mm. No spirit, literal spirit in the spirits, you know what I mean? No heart in there. Can't stand it. Two, those who make promises with no substance in them. So, you listen to me. World's a different place now, but so is everyone in it. So if you're going to make promises to people, you got to make sure there's substance there. And so help me if you ever serve me alcohol that's as piss poor as this muscle that I'm looking at right now. No substance, no nothing that I will get you and I'll punch you and you'll learn a thing or two from it. But listen, we'll do what you're saying. I'm all right with it. World's different. You don't have the money, fine. But so help me you ever do it again. I... You really will only have one eye. Oh, I'm Aiden, not gonna Aiden, fuck Aiden, his eye, Aiden's yeah? just I'm leaning like... against the wall, kind of watching this as it's like the deepest thing he's ever heard Merit yeah. say. You just have, to, you have you to make the, you have to make the last part, like the scariest yeah. part. <laughs> you hear Lithani, uh, who was just trying to disappear completely. She just wanted to phase out of existence during this conversation. Uh, you hear her kind of in a, in a low voice. Why do they call him one eye? And that's, that's it. What's his name? What's his name for real? What's his, it's like suddenly like right over on her. What is his name? What is it for real? What is it? Uh, one eye stands up and just kind of folds his arms and looks at her and she looks away from you like i nope, I'm not I, doing I, it. I take a side step over towards one eye put a hand on his shoulder we're not talking to you right now <laughs> and i try and put him back down in his seat push him down a little bit ah. she she just kind of shakes her head like nope mm -mm. can i adjacently make an intimidation check based <laughs> off of the precedent of the threat that I just made and seeing yeah, how can. excited Zumi is. I think Merit wants to help Zumi just get whatever she wants in life, <laughs> basically. Yeah. So can I try to like menacingly step up sure. behind Zumi? Okay, all right, all right, let me see. You uh, hear the hard footsteps. And then you look, and you look to see someone towering over Zumi. But no, it's below. <laughs> My energy is strong. Yeah, yeah the presence. Powerful. It's just an aura, you know? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let me check really fast, because yeah. I know I do also have Yeah, you have a... some. I have some Intim stuff built in yeah. here. Okay, so Beastly Demeanor. Uh, yeah, at second level, you gain a passive Intim score, which you can use to replace roles when making Intim ability sure. checks. This passive is 10 plus your strength modifier. Okay, so I can roll an Intim check, and if yeah. it's not very good, I can use this. Yeah, right. that'll be the baseline. So the baseline is 10 plus your strength, which is, what, 12? So if you don't get higher I... than that, we'll take the 12. <laughs> I, mean, I might need it. What, I got a 10? <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we might need it. So. That's fine. Let me do instead then, uh, I'll do the beastly demeanor. So beastly demeanor, I'll add um, baseline 10 plus strength modifier. That that brings it higher, yeah? Yeah, so Not it's much. 12 total. It's okay, 12 total. It's, right, right. total. it's higher than the 10 that I was looking for. So, because she's very, yeah. Merit's very gonna just, scared right now. Merit's just going to go, in the interest of being truthful with one another. Just stand behind Zoomy like. She just kind of looks, she looks away and she says one word and it's just Lance. Lance, 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 Lance. That's, yeah, that's, that's what we call him. I take but, a step forward uh, and pull a hundred gill. Might not be pouch. a full name. 
and uh, I, I kind of tease it up in the air to her and be like, you know, we do pay for information if it's good. <laughs> what I is just you can you can feel his aura now. Now he's going to try and intimidate her <laughs> to not like he was like, OK, here it goes. Wait, are they actually having success? All right. Now he's going to try and intimidate. I don't know that he's that good at it. Is he? No, not really. Did he he tied you? Oh. It's 50-50. Alright. High or low? Uh merit. High or low. If we're gonna roll, you pick high or low. It's gonna break on 51. I'm rolling a hundred sided die. Hi. Hi, okay. 64 yep <laughs> you won so she you know she says lance and then when you say the money and you know he tries to stop her she just goes we call him lance he's 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 our cousin that's that's it yeah that's it Okay. I, I, I she's pull. Like, she's confused. Yeah. What? I, I pull the gill. The, the, the gill back a little bit and be like, "We know that though. Last name, family name." She looks over at him, like, "What? Should I?" And one eye's like, "It doesn't. That what? That doesn't matter. Like, what? What do you? What do you need with my full name? You've got more than anybody else does already." You're not able to pay us because of how bad your reputation is right now. I think we need to know a little bit more about what all this is. Okay. Okay. <laughs> you can see him just go, Fuck. okay. All right. All right. Look, just sit down. I will tell you what you want to know. I will write up a contract. How about that? I'll write up a contract between us so that you know that I will pay you as you help me get this off the ground and we'll make sure that it's admissible, right? You know, you can you can come at me after that. You'll see my full name on the paperwork. Does that I mean, I'm just looking for the la for the family name right now. I mean, you already told us that mm -hmm. that you were going to pay us and you haven't. What good is it if it's on paper or not? Did we not have a contract before? The for the first job, yes, but the cult stuff afterwards no no one was it wasn't like a an agreement it was a oh you guys want to look into that i will come with you um because he felt like he wanted to help but he he says okay i'll tell you i'll tell you who i who i am and, and what i used to do and yes the family is that good I sit there kind of rolling the coin between my fingers. I just say, <laughs> start talking. All right. So cool. So cool when you're not being a nerd with your ropes. <laughs> it's okay. So he sits down a Did little defeated. Did you a nerd's rope joke? <laughs> Nerdy boy with rope. Is there actually a specific reference nerd's rope. that would be a nerd rope? Uh, uh, candy. Is that actually candy. a thing? It's, it's candy. 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 I don't know if I ever had nerds rope. I had just like normal nerds, but yeah, it's it's like nerds on a sticky gummy core Twizzler that's like thing. a rope. Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. you did start the episode talking about how you wanted to buy candy. Yeah, I, I totally did, yeah. did that. I did. I did make that joke. Yeah. So clever. I'm so clever. Yeah. So he sits down in a huff, um, just defeated, uh, and he says, "It's true. Uh, Lance is a nickname." But that is what I was called. Uh, I was in. I was a guard in Yulmore. But and you know he he kind of so, struggles at saying something about it. Go ahead. So he's like Woodwaler Lance. <laughs> yeah, probably. Um, and he he's he struggles at saying something, and you hear Lindell in the corner go, "But you never did anything." And you can hear that brattiness come back out. And he says, I was a logistical officer. I had things to do. They just weren't on the battlefield. But yes, we come from a family that in a long time ago, 
we were we our name meant something we fought along menphilia we protected the realm and then vaudry vaudry came and and things changed and i left my family was still there and they have been but things have changed and i feel like i should do this now this is what i want to do so i need the help this is why i was looking for people who had seen the star shower i knew something was coming from that right like the, it's it's brand new the world has changed we need to go out and we need to help people but we can't do it like this and he just gestures at all the paper like what is this who knows what's going on right it has to be organized and the guard can't do it and we've always just dealt with sinners right they're loosely organized to say the least you hear the venom in his voice there when he says sinners he does not appreciate the vocation but we have to organize this a little bit and that's what i'm looking to do and that's what i need help with and yes i don't have any money i mean i have an amount of money i just not enough to pay you right now that's not your name what's not my name that's what aiden asked for is your name your full real name he says okay it's fine his name and you know he says it's it's lancel and he stops for a second and you hear lindell in the corner snicker because his full name is lancel um Cotoon, K H O T U N. In in Lancel's defense, mm -hmm. Zumi turns around and points at Lindel and goes, Your name's Lindel. Yeah. And you know, one eye uh chuckles a little bit and he says, It's we have a theme, I guess. I I, I look yeah. at him and go, Now was that so hard? And I kind of flip the coin over to him. <laughs> You're paying him. There it well, goes. Look and and then that. and then you I I stand for a second, <laughs> take a couple steps over, and take the coin from him. You owe us for the last job. <laughs> that was good. You let it land on the table, and then you go and get it. He does not try and take it from you. That was good. You just paid right. your your cut less. <laughs> <laughs> Merit. Says, um. Okay. Oh, Merit size. Just, uh -huh. like, size. You can tell she's obviously not particularly happy about how right. this has all turned out. You know, she just wanted a job that would be straightforward, that would pay consistently. But there's been a lot of things happening that she doesn't completely understand herself, mm -hmm. including all the voices and nonsense and shenanigans she's heard since the star shower. But, yeah. you know, at the very least, he's brought them all together. So she kind of... <sighs> and then just goes... <sighs> You're turning over a new leaf. Well, I can respect that. You want to do something after doing nothing for so long. I can respect that, too. Oh, my God, he's Alpha now. Oh, my God, you're so right. <laughs> you know, it's nice to meet you officially mm -hmm. and to have it all out in the open. I'd counsel a bit more of that going forward because, <laughs> let's be real, you more held plenty of secrets and they were not that great. To learn the truth about mm -mm. little messed up if i'm being honest with you a lot of messed up a lot of problems there so being truthful being honest being yourself that's good but you can improve it we can all improve ourselves so i respect what you're doing what are these jobs you told us about you best work on getting some money though i'm just going to say that you best work on it not just hope to expect it to fall in your lap get some real money so you can pay us now you hear right I am I'm working with the connections that I still do have in Yulmore. I'm working with some of the sinners I know here. The money, it will flow. It's just going to take a little while, right? Um, but yes, in the meantime, in the meantime, uh, he kind of rummages through his papers and he, he picks up one uh, kind of, you could tell that it was posted to a bulletin board. Um, and he says, see, here, here's a job right now. Uh, it's a, a woman I know, actually. She's she's a, a researcher. Um, actually, you know, she's probably over in the Cabinet of Curiosity right now. Uh, but 
here. And he kind of hands it to whoever's closest. I guess that would be Aiden since you came and picked up the coin. Yeah. So he hands you over a piece of paper. And on it, it says that um, there's a researcher named Renelda who is looking for people to help her research the ecology of Northern Lakeland. It pays, right? It says that um, the uh, salary or the, the payment is negotiable, but no lower than 1,500 gil, which is quite a bit. Well, this takes us the direction we were already going. I can't say I'm particularly looking forward to researching, but uh, Aiden, you're good at that. You've got that, that head on your shoulders. So we could go over, you could take a look at those maps, the documents that we found. We could talk to this lady. Yeah, we could we could do that. I mean, we have books about Lakeland already, but, you know, if if maybe they can't find them, I mean, there's no reason not to take advantage of that. Like and... they keep saying, the world is changing. So yeah. one eye is just kind of looking on expectantly like, yes, no? Good? Yeah, we'll do it. And I'll walk over and look at the <laughs> maps on his desks, you know, uh -huh. and, and say which, which one's of these are we looking at what, do, what uh, do you want me to look at so he'll give you uh the ones that you got right they're yours not his um he just had them and he'll also hand over his maps uh so he has a collection of them because a lot of them have been lost to time he took them from the cabinet of curiosity anyway so it's fine um but these are maps of lakeland and ilmeg uh specifically because Ostal is kind of right on the border um, of what we understand to be that separation now. Um, and they're just kind of ancient maps of the area. So when you look at Austell, you don't see the Austell Imperative, right? That, that was not there at the time. It was a small village, um, but it's kind of overlaid in the same place. So he's going through historical layers of maps to see if there was something there. You know, Lax and Loft is a ruin. Maybe there's a ruin there, too. Um, but that's what you can glean from it. Um, but as you take them, he says, uh, you know, I talked to Morin, but only to get these. He might have more information or, you know, someone there might be able to help you more than, than, than him. I don't know. I just haven't had time to go over there yet. Okay, Zumi's going to walk over, stick her figure in his face, but less in like a I'm being mean kind of way, more in uh -huh. like a your nose got booped kind of way. <laughs> um. She's going to say, okay, don't forget the contract, okay? <laughs> uh, right. Right. I'll write it's that so up cute. right now. Good. All right. And then she gives him a hug and runs away. <laughs> Let's go. She's completely confused. Merritt watches her go, just like shaking her head, but like with a little bit of fondness and is like, Yep, the contract. You remember what I said? You remember what I threatened? And then she looks at the other, the the young man, Lindel. Yeah. Lindel. Lindel, yeah. She goes, "You ever want to put those muscles to good use and learn about how to use them to help people, or you know, just to beat each other up a little bit, which is a good time too? You let me know." And then she points at the <laughs> young woman and goes, yeah. "You ever want to get more muscles and get a backbone? You come to me. I'll teach you a little something." And then she like turns around and starts after Zumi, but like turns her head back with this like slightly impish expression mm -hmm. from the little sliver that you can see with her like <laughs> beard eyes. and her helmet. Yes. And she goes, uh, Lancel, pleasure. <laughs> Not really. You should pay us, but get the contract going. See you later. See you later. Lolly <laughs> <Yeah>. ho. <laughs> Lancel. I just, <laughs> I just kind of watch as as they walk out, and I look back, and I see the the expressions on all of them, and I look oh. at Lancel and just be like, "I'm not hugging you," and I walk out and follow him out. <laughs> you can you can hear a very deep sigh <laughs> as you leave. <laughs> it's a uh... okay. So he's wow. my friend, and I'm mad at him, but I just wanted him to know I'm not mad enough that I don't like him anymore. <laughs> I'll take us to the Crystarium. Uh, do you see at the top a little icon up there? Oh, yeah, look at that. Yeah, it's hey, a quest yeah. icon. Yeah, it's, it's a quest matter. icon. Yeah, that's the name of this quest. Oh. <laughs> you are the cutest human being, Aldiano. 
We're the most <laughs> wonderful detailed. Cutest is just the word that came to my mind. But <laughs> it's narratively powerful. This is so cute. It's called a grave. You did, you did a whole patch title screen. You're the best. You're such a good DM. Just, just you wait. Just you wait. This is why I'm so happy that we're back, because we could be so tongue-in-cheek now that we're out of Shadowbringers completely, too. That's another great point. I mean, I see, um, so, I see this quest title, and I was like, what other Breaking Bad references are we going to have? <laughs> <laughs> I have to do uh, the Loke team some justice, at least a little bit. But yeah, so is there anything else you want to do on the way to the cabinet? Um, any what place you want to stop? What supplies looking like? Sure, yeah. So let's look at inventories and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, a little bit of checking. I think, um, I know you have some potions of healing. Um, yep. I know that, uh, you know, I'm going to get us the... Um, there's a module that I'll get that's party inventory so that we can start putting things in there. Um, I just don't have it yet. I know there's the, is there another shrinking potion or is there just one? Rook, you wanted to say something? I was just going to ask you if I could retcon something a little oh, bit. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Not like actually retcon, yeah. but because it's been so long since yeah, the last yeah, episode yeah. and we like ended on the fight and then the going back and everything. Would it be a possible thing that merit could mm -hmm. have collected something from the plant to try to brew alcohol. Oh, yes. With. <laughs> Absolutely. That makes perfect sense. Like, that okay. would have been in the falling action of the battle. Absolutely. Um, so Tack a little something off. I don't know. But... We're all getting yeah. ready to leave. Maris is over there, like, milking the plant or something. Like... Yeah. <laughs> Whatever works, yeah. Yeah, like... <laughs> I'm imagining like one of those the, one of those fronds at like the the torso part of it. It doesn't have a torso, but you know what I mean. That would have like collected water or something. Like you just took one of those like leaves and and uh, you know it's pretty big. It's probably as big as your torso, right? Okay. Or a Perfect. bunch of them. Uh, we'll give you we'll give you that just to see what sort of alchemical stuff you can get out of them. I I've got it. it like wrapped around my chest and like. <laughs> <Yeah>. not... <laughs> okay, you look great. like you're Perfect. on safari. <laughs> this is my own island sanctuary it's a little more hardcore yeah. on the first but not yeah, many definitely. islands left because i know that you wanted to start looking into you know brewing stuff and screw it we'll make a system for that that sounds like fun uh but yeah anything along the way um on the way there there's uh spagyrics there's uh ballistics there's the um uh hunt kiosk as well if you wanted to check in on that i will let you know that there will always be hunts to look at i wanted that for you guys you don't have to do them if you want to check in now you can if you want to do it later that's okay like it all depends on what you're doing at the time this is kind of a break in the main story almost um so yeah you can always check that out if you ever wanted to well i guess the question is do we right now want mm -hmm. to like take care of business stuff or like do whatever kind of yeah. activities we would collectively want to do in the Crystarium, or do we want to go straight to mm -hmm. examine the maps and follow up on this quest what do you both feel like what do you both yeah. feel like as a that's a vibe check as a time check we have about an, well a little bit less than an hour for falling action right so i don't i don't want to get too stuck in but you I can say definitely continue maps yeah, I mean, yeah, we, we, we just picked up the maps. We were already heading over to the yeah the cabinet. We might okay. as well keep going. It's not like it'll immediately take us out if we need to do something no. around yeah, here. Exactly. So you make your way to the cabinet of curiosity, which I swear, yes, I do. Yeah, I don't know how zoomed in that is for you, though. Uh, I don't own a token to view the scene. <laughs> oh, yeah, you don't? No. That sucks. <laughs> wow, I see that, that one I cheaped out even here. Yeah. Didn't even give us tokens. Man, that, 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 those buns are, are really <laughs> running out. Your face. <laughs> there you go. Probably. There it is. There yeah. we go. I remember how to founder. Sometimes. That's hard. Yeah. <laughs> Especially because it's been a year. And I have, I don't know, 40 of these images. Um, so, Cabinet of Curiosity. Your old stomping grounds, Aiden. Um, but yeah, so Renelda should be somewhere here, and yeah, you do have the maps to research. So, what do you guys want to do as you enter? Uh, it's a do fairly, oh, go ahead. Uh, um, I'll just explain. It's a fairly low energy type of day in here. I, what day is high energy in a library? 
I would not want to be there, then something is horribly going wrong. Um, low energy day, there's a few researchers bouncing around, but a little bit less busy than you're used to, Aiden. So it's funny that you should phrase it that way, but because as mm -hmm. soon as they enter the cabinet, Zumi goes, Renova! I just I immediately turn to Zumi, go, shh. You're not the boss of me. Yeah. You and every researcher that you can see from right, you know, right in inside the door, do it at exactly the same time. It's like None this of... slow turn and then a shh. None like of you are the boss of me. Like the THX you... surround sound demo, but with shushing. Yeah. <laughs> can you can deal with one shout really quick? Okay. God. I mean, like they researchers. they look and then they look away. But it did work because from that second level there. You see a elf woman uh, kind of lean over and kind of wave like, stop. No, I'm coming down. Like, I'm coming down. Everyone's in such a panic. <laughs> hey, it worked, though. It did. Just saying. Um, but you see her kind of come down the stairs uh, towards you. Um, if you're just going to stand there, she'll come down to you. Um, as she approaches, you notice that she is wearing kind of the traditional kind of robe um, of a librarian. So it looks like she works here. And in fact, Aiden, you do recognize her as someone who's here often. Um, now, I don't remember your, what is your background? Is it Sage? Do we pick background? I forget. Um, I don't it, remember. It, I don't think that we. Did you ask if it was Sage? Yeah, in 5th edition, there are... It does are say backers. Sage on my... Okay, okay. Yeah. Because that gives you, like, um, you were a researcher and you have the ability to research things and things like that. Okay, It's like, how dare you call me Sage? I'm a dragoon. Yeah. <laughs> um, do Wouldn't I have, have had this conversation there? a year ago. <laughs> I'll give you a chance to have met her. Um, just give me... I hate making people do just naked rolls because you have to type it. But if you could type a slash R, no, I know you should, it sucks. you should have a you should have a button at the bottom, right? Uh, uh, did yeah. I add a button? Yeah, we have a, a just a stat roll and a roll off. Yeah, just do the roll off then. Okay, cool. I forgot that I made that. Awesome. Eh, no, nah, she's not super familiar. <laughs> uh, nah. Thanks, past me. You were really thinking about me. Um, but as she <laughs> approaches. Uh, you notice that uh, she is an elf woman. She is not super tall for, uh, you know, an elven person. She has uh, kind of shorter, uh, kind of in a bob, um, strawberry blonde hair. Um, she definitely does not look like she is any sort of athlete or thing. She has kind of a slight build. Um, but as she approaches, first in a whispered tone from, from a bit of a distance, she greets you. And she says, are you here about my, my posting? Yes, Lancel sent us. I don't... One I eye. Know that, that's his name. Oh! Really? Yeah. It's a secret, uh, though. <laughs> that's weird. Yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know him very much. He just came to talk to me about this, and then he said that people would be here. Um, that I can see why he goes by a different name. <laughs> anyway, um, so yeah, so you're here about the Great Draco. This is not listed in there at all. Yes. Uh, oh, perhaps I should explain. Uh, so I am an ecologist. Um, I, I research kind of nature and its habitats and, and, and the, the, the creatures that live there. Um, and because of, I mean, the recent changes, things are just, all of our research means nothing. She says this in a very happy tone, she getting a little bit louder Aiden, than she should. Like, see? <laughs> <laughs> she kind of tone checks herself, brings it down, maybe about to a five again. Well, here's the thing. These gray Draco, they, they're, they're like uh, lizard uh, with wings. 
She searches for the word dragon, but I still don't know if dragons exist on the first, and I'm not going to be the one to set that precedent. So these are drakes. Um, she says these are, are drakes that are local to uh, uh, Northern Lakeland, and they're in, a, they're in a bit of trouble, at least I think. Uh -huh. She leaves it there. You're way, okay. And she's like, oh, okay, cool. I, I, you you want to hear about it? Okay. She seems amazed that you want to talk to her. Uh, she's very excited. Uh, she says, okay, so nearby there are uh, these horrible furry little nuggets, gremlins. Nuggets. Yeah. And they've been harrying the local population ever since there's the, the night has returned. I don't know exactly why this has changed, but I've noticed a change in the demeanor of the Great Draco. They've become more territorial, which is a problem because they're quite strong. Um, really quite strong. Uh, so I, I really need someone to go there. And w what I need you to do is, and she kind of fumbles around and, and reaches around in a, a belt pocket. And she brings out something that kind of looks like an etherometer. Um, but not kind of the two lobed one uh, that you look through or anything like that. It's kind of a little tag almost. Um, and she says, I want you to find a few specimens. And I want you to attach this to them. And then I should be able to track them and, and, and their, their movements. Now, I don't, I don't need you to attack the gremlin, right? That could, be, that could be even worse, right? As much as I would love for some of them to die in the course of this research, she, said, she phrased it that way, 100%. And it's okay if, if you know, maybe they attack you or, or anything. I won't, I won't question you there. But I, it's a very delicate balance right now. Any responses? Merrick kind of... Mm -hmm. mm, yeah, there was a well, lot. If they come after us, yeah, I'll kill them. Um, <laughs> not so good at researching, but pretty pretty good, I like to think, at yeah, killing a thing. Um, so yeah, I'll, I'll do that. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, it seems pretty straightforward. Seems easy enough. Yeah. Well, you know, I had a friend um, once that used mm -hmm. to call me a gremlin. Small, hairy... I didn't much care for it, but I liked him, so I allowed it. Uh, I won't mind facing a few of them down, see if they're anything like me, really. Um, so... Uh -huh. Kind of looks at Aiden, who just said, yeah, sounds easy. You want us to put tags on the Dracos and yes. not hurt them? No, I mean, they probably won't want you to, so... Yeah. Uh, as long as you don't truly harm them i mean i i'm not i confess i did not think about how you you would get them to want it to be attached or or how you would do that or but, where in fact that we could put it where they wouldn't just rip it off oh well that she stops and she thinks yeah i Oh, that's a problem. Yeah, I think the best place would probably be behind the ear. That's the business end of the Draco, right? It sure is. <laughs> um, well, we can wrangle them. Aiden's got a lot of rope, so we'll just rope him. Sure. And then sure. Uh, put it on. Well, I told maybe, you this stuff was useful. Yeah. Maybe we can, um, maybe we can find a way to uh, incapacitate them. Checking, I have my a... spellers, yeah. checking my spellers, checking my spellers. Yeah, she, she, as you're checking, she'll say, uh, maybe someone over in Spagyrix could, could give us some concoction to knock them out, and then you could do it. Um, I do have some friends over there. She starts to think about it for the very first time. I feel like we need some jellyfish from an island sanctuary to make some incapacitating <laughs> bombs. Wrong, yeah, shard, exactly. wrong shard, wrong <laughs> shard. <laughs> But yeah, you, you got her there. She has not thought about how you would do it. It's just put out a, a quest and people do it, right? I don't know how, the, how are they going to do it. I don't care. It's, do that's... you happen to know if Draco's count as animals? Yes, they would. Okay. Yep. 100%. So yeah, well, you have, 
Would you have insight into them as mm -hmm. like uh, a blue mage? Yes, and also I have speak with animals, so I could just yep. explain the situation. <laughs> yeah, you you might be able to, right? <laughs> so, uh, you know, she says, yeah, uh, maybe there's some sort of concoction that we can have brewed over at Spagiric. Um, so I confess I haven't thought about it. If you had to explain to the Dracos in a good light what this tag was for and why they would want it on them, what would you say? <laughs> if I could speak to them? Yeah. Huh. That's a novel question. Um, I would say that that this is to help protect them from I don't know. I don't that's a good question. If I could just explain to them that I just I just need this to be here so that I can make sure that they're not in danger in some way. If I could explain that to them, that's what I would do. I would just tell them that it's it's to keep them from being in danger. I don't know how they would take how does a Drake think about and you can see her kind of get lost. She's never thought about what they could think either. Like that's that's what are, you, what are you talking about? Like we just research from the outside. They're not. They don't have. Well, they do have brains, but they don't have thought. You can see this this existential crisis going on. So that's all you got. Uh, you you just no. you just want to make sure they're safe, and that's what this is for. Oh, I have a. I have a complete treatise on their demeanor and and where they where they are are sighted and what they eat and 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 how they mate. That's very important right now. Um, technically, theoretically, at some point in the past, there were mating seasons, but you know, with the flood of light, it kind of any time now. I'm real but... sorry, but you're getting off on a tangent, and I need to know. <laughs> Oh, what you want me to uh, tell this Drake? Oh well, I was just going to tell you that it's probably it's it's mating season, so <laughs> if you could talk to them, they'd be preoccupied with one thing in particular. But um, yeah, I I think if I could talk to them, I would just tell them that it's it's to protect them. It's it's for their own good. It it um it it is it isn't harmful. I think. But yeah, she you know as she was talking about the treatise, she has nearby on that first floor kind of a little table and station with a stack of books about these these creatures because she thought hey maybe you might need all the research that has ever been done to uh these things uh so i i look at her and say uh i'm assuming you'll you'll reimburse any costs for uh any uh supplies we would need to get to uh fasten these tags on them right um yeah actually Sure. If if you do need to go to like Spagyrix, you can tell. Uh, give me one moment. I have to actually get the name of the person in Spagyrix because I know I have that. If it takes me too long, I will just say that. Yeah, it'll take me too long. Uh, you can tell them that Renelda sent you, and this is for uh, materials related to my research. I have an account there. It's up to date. She she says, "Don't worry, it's it's up to date." So, what do you aside from place? Mm -hmm. What do you think is the best way to attach this thing? Oh, it's 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 self adhesive. Um, she says, "All you need to do," and she kind of flips it over, and she says, "You remove this little plate." I can't push to talk and also pantomime. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you remove this little plate. And their ether itself should help adhere it, right? It's it's kind of uh, it has some sort of attraction force, you know. If you get my meaning, mm -hmm. uh, you like probably shouldn't put it on drakes, yourself. Sort of like how all the drakes are attracted to each other just year round right now. It sounds like. <laughs> all right. It makes it really hard to research. I mean, could we now hear me out? Uh huh. Could we lure them in mm -hmm. by, uh, you know, um. You know, amongst the dwarves, we have certain things we might say, you know what I mean? You're out, you're hitting up the pub, you're hanging out, you're drinking. You might say a little something. You might yell a little lolly ho in a specific way, you know what I mean? And then someone else knows that, oh, lolly ho, me too, you know? 
Is there something like that, but the equivalent for animals? Do you know if there's like a, a little wink, nudge, nod, nod you could kind of do? Do you know, Zoom? You know more about beasties than I do. Like, um, like a, mm, yeah, and then they come over kind of thing. <laughs> do you know to lure them? I, Are you laughing I at don't me? think like, we you know need what I'm to... saying. Here's here's what I'm thinking, right? If if they're maybe uh, you know, but Lolly Hoen out there, yeah, uh, yeah. you know, maybe after they're they're done with their their business, they they might be a little hungry for for you know food, ah, and so like we can go over to Spagyrix, get something to you know put into whatever is over there that they would eat, mm. knocks them out. We go in, we slap the things on them, job done. Yeah. Uh, Renelda, you know, has been nodding along with all of this. She was kind of confused about the specific type of lolly ho, uh, but but I think she got it now. Um, that lolly ho over there. Yeah. Like there, a there's there's lolly ho, and then there's yeah. lolly ho, you know? Like, I, I, you mean, I, I don't go cruising, but if I did, I would call it lolly hoeing from now on. I hope that that catches on. <laughs> oh, That's just no. great. It's no, just no, good. No, 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 it's no, gender no, no, neutral. No, no. You know, it's good either way. I like, like it. Yeah, the first yeah. half of the word, very dangerous. <laughs> uh, that's true. That's true. You have to <laughs> make sure you spell it. Um, Jeez. What have I yeah, done? yeah. This this show <laughs> always makes us have to change the tags on the Twitch. You know, BDSM. Uh, Hoenn, uh, that's I'm, never been a thing that we've had to do. I don't. It's, okay, good. I'm glad. I just you know. I'm just know over here enjoying the many uses of of rope and uh -huh. you you all to are the ones yeah. making it weird yeah sure yeah yeah, mm -hmm. yeah i definitely am <laughs> but uh, I, i'm so an innocent in your... all this <laughs> she gets your meaning and she says okay um yeah i think that i mean made mating call um she gets super scientific here uh, yes, the, their mating calls, they do have specific noises that I could try to reproduce. She's, Can you demonstrate them for us? That would be helpful. Uh, uh, well, um, you, you can kind of see her kind of do the, the panic emote a little bit. Um, uh, sh sure. Uh, it's kind of like, it's usually from, from the males. Uh, and, and the males are the ones, uh, when they kind of spread their wings, there's this beautiful pattern underneath. Uh, it, it's very, very colorful. Um, but they usually puff up, they kind of extend the wings, and they make this 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 kind of guttural uh, lowing, if, if you will. Kind of like a... Uh, this, this noise that comes out of her, you do not expect to come out of her, her body. One more time. Kind of like I'm a, sorry. Uh, I tuned out when you started telling me about all the nonsense uh, with the wings uh, and things. One more it's time. Like a, it's like a. Uh, it, it's like it, okay. it, it really. It, at the end, it kind of reverberates. Um, that's, that's due to their physiology. You see. And she stops. We don't, we don't need to go into it. But it's kind of a. Yeah, it's this deep guttural uh, a sound. And it's harder for us to hear easier for them to hear of course because it's kind of just lower pitched than we can normally hear so Ooh. it sounds like more than that to them i'm sure but to us it's 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 kind of that noise and how about the other two you can either of you reproduce sure. that authentically <clears throat> well so i mean here's with them here's here's my initial thought right so we mm -hmm. could we could just wait for them so we just interrupts him with a Ooh, <laughs> yeah that sounds pretty good to me did that sound authentic to you? like a little a little more rasp, um, but it, yeah. <laughs> There's this like other person looking at the books, a couple stacks down, just goes. Shh. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you, Fusion. I will take that. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, this is research. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, okay, like okay so I. Song, but like, oh yeah. my. <laughs> it does, doesn't it? So, so I already proposed my idea of just right. waiting for the the uh, right. finality of the lolly hoeing. Oh, that mm -hmm. sounds like it worked but, as fun. I was just but with but it. you now you I now want to, to invite the Drakes to lolly ho you. 
cool. I mean, no, you. Just I like really my get it. idea better. I mean, you're you know you can be into whatever you want to be. Aiden, <laughs> Aiden, what happens in that ridiculous little smooth-faced head of yours? What happens in there? I didn't say anything about wanting to mate with them myself. I just said. Why would you need? Him, why would you need the mating call? And how so to do up. the. So they show up and they're like, there's no, no, there's no ladies here, but there's food. Exactly. Zumi gets me. Aiden. <laughs> I mean, I, just like I don't know Aiden about talk. these drinks, but if I'm in the mood for some lolly ho and, and I hear like somebody else like, hey, and I go over there and it's just a sandwich that usually doesn't fulfill the need that I was looking for. Those but would you eat the sandwich? Rinaldi yeah, breaks in. You would still eat I the mean, sandwich. Probably. I mean, it depends yeah. on when I ate last. I... <laughs> if you're feeling a little peckish, you know? I mean, you could just get them to come to us is what I was thinking, mostly, mm. Aiden. But as always, your mind goes to just the most... <laughs> I mean, don't get me wrong, I find it actually pretty hilarious. But it just jumps straight to something... You know, it's all right. You just do what you're going to do. That's all right. Yeah, we'll figure it out a way to get them to come uh, to us or tie them up or whatever. Aiden's got some thoughts on that just, for sure. We find a bush. We watch them lolly ho. And then we, we sp sprinkle we a little. Because we need to be there when they're done. When they're looking, when they're hungry. Aiden, Aiden, Aiden. You're just digging a deeper hole for yourself. You're bloody deep in it. You're just a dig. I would never we dig a hole inside Listen. the cabinet of curiosity. Listen, as dwarves, we have a say it. You dig into the mountain. You don't dig right under your own feet so you fall down and trap yourself. You don't just dig a hole under yourself. You dug one, and that's all right. I, I, take, I take my spear <laughs> off my back, and I'm like trying to dig under my feet. I'm like, I don't understand how that would work. <laughs> right now, because that's not a shovel. She's just kind of looking back and forth watching this conversation. Kind of confused, but just thinking about something completely different. Um, but as you, you know, you pull it out and you're like, well, how am I going to dig a hole? And she breaks in and she says, um, yeah, I, okay. So you just, you're going to lure them and hmm. then maybe incapacitate them mm -hmm. and then attach. I think that's a good idea. Um, you can, you, you can use the mating call if you want. I mean, that's, that's fine. I, I confess I never thought of that myself. But I, I, then again, I was alone, and that's probably not a great idea. Mm -mm. She's, she's just flabbergasted at, at these new methods. Adventurers are wild. Um, <laughs> this is some very, very intense research. Uh, but she says, any other information you, you need, like... Um, Yes. You know, how to identify a male versus a female. How much, how much um, knockout stuff do we need to knock out a drake? Because if we don't give them enough, then we wasted our time. Ah, uh, well, they're usually around uh, two yalms long, real life. That's, that's about six feet. The yalm should be a yard, and the yard is blah, 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 and mm. whatever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah. two meters. There you go for our non-American friends. Um, and they usually weigh about three times a normal hume male. So, unless you weigh Aiden. That. Wow. Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> anywhere from like, I mean, you're you're athletic. You're a dragoon. You're probably a little bit taller. Anywhere from like, I don't know, one eighty to two something, depending on muscle. I don't know. We'll we'll we'll, uh, we'll call it a, a one ninety. Okay, I'll meet you in um, the middle. So yeah, we'll go around two hundred. So they would be around six hundred pounds. I don't know that in any other. I'm sorry. Like I I can do <laughs> other puns, onzes. Yeah, puns? I, mounds. I, I can't get onzes from there. I'm sorry. Sounds. I, I don't. I can't. I'm sorry. I'll do better On, next time. Onzes, punzes. <laughs> <laughs> ask yeah. you something i'll do you know, we can do sure, i can ask yeah, you yeah. after we have finished this conversation too but it's about it's about subduing them yeah something. no problem yeah yeah okay Go ahead. so when we were fighting the reflesia equivalent mm -hmm. right yeah they in that particular iteration of creature right in some of these different fights they sometimes emit like 
hypnotic spores mm -hmm. or like cause a sleep effect kind of thing. Yeah. I was just looking it up to confirm even even behind the scenes. Yeah. And because I grabbed something from that, did we see that happen in like in the fight? Would that um, be something that I Yes. What I'm trying did. to kind of okay. What when I'm trying to kind of angle it. at is Oh, yeah, okay. I was hit by it because he was kind of in a bad way. That's why that that sneaky fish spit kind of saved him. OK. OK. All right. OK. Yeah. So you definitely uh, Merit herself would know that it has some sort of, you know, paralyzing sleep, the incapacitating something or other. Um, and you do have a leaf of it. Um, and, you know, you could collect more, but Spagyrix might already know of the substance, but it's definitely a lead. Okay. For sure. All right, okay, I'll be like noodling on that. I'll be yeah. like noodling on that. Um, so, uh, what was the last thing she said? Oh, yes, they weigh about three times a normal Hume. Um, am I getting that wrong? Are they here? They're, no, they're Hume on the... Hume. Humes. Yeah, that's right. Sometimes I confuse myself. They're about triple, so around 600 pounds. So it would take about a similar amount to tranquilizing a wolverine, she says. And those are those red bear-like things in southern Lakeland. My brain went from, like, real-world wolverine, which was hard to say, to the big one. Yeah, the big one. They're about, like, a small bear. I was like, there's yeah. X-Men in Lakeland? <laughs> yes. There's Sabretooth. Uh, well, that gives us the amount we're going to need. Yeah, for so at least, How many yeah. are we doing? Uh, she says, I only have six of these, uh, okay. these tags. So I, only six. I, I think that that is enough. Um, you know, they never number, from what we can tell, more than a couple hundred anyway. Um, you know, they're, they're not uh, prolific. She but says. they respawn quickly. Yeah, because they're doing it constantly. <laughs> she did not even realize what she just said. Um, she says, uh, any other information? So she kind of gestures towards the uh, the table with the books, and she says, anything else that I can answer about their what ecology? What pisses them off? Ah. Well, as far as we can tell, they're, they're pretty, they're normally... Uh, okay with with man right um there's not a lot of incidents of these situations now when they are actively looking for a mate that changes right if if they are actively looking for a mate what usually happens if they then interact with the you know a, a a person is uh they will you know puff up on their hind legs they will show off their uh their wing and that's kind of a signal to to leave um now, if you don't, uh, they have quite powerful claws, and their wings also have at least an ability in small prey to fascinate them, to, to sort of hypnotize. Um, you yeah. know, they have this way of using their ether to kind of flash the pattern on these wings in a way that, for smaller prey, like, we, we're not entirely sure if it will work on... <laughs> It's hardy individual. Um, children, probably. Probably. Uh, anyone else? I'm not entirely sure. But uh, what pisses them off, you say? Not much other than being in their way when they're looking for a mate. Okay, so um, maybe no hoing. May maybe, maybe not. I don't know. Um, let's see. Anything else here? Shh yourself! Shh yourself! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, beautiful wings and powerful claws are the, the main things that they are known for. That's, I mean, that seems good enough to me. We've got uh, to just put these on them. So figure out a way to subdue them. Put all six mm -hmm. on them. Maybe we kill some of the little gremlins. Maybe we don't. That's all right. I'll try to kill a few because that just sounds like it'll make the whole thing more interesting in my book. Uh, but other than that, did you want to... I don't know. Aiden, did you want to... Uh, pull your mind out of the hole you dug and maybe take a look at those maps that you had. I told you, you can't dig a hole underneath your... Maps, the, though? The, maps? Uh, yeah, maps. Uh, <laughs> map stuff is over over here. Yeah. Okay, okay so uh, Renelda is like, oh, okay, um, 
well, these uh, the the research will be right here in case you need to, you know, cross cross reference. And she just she seems like you want to read my books. Nah, we won't need to. Thanks, though. <laughs> it just like turns around and goes. <laughs> Uh, we also take the tags. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Okay, cool. Um, well then, for researching those maps, she gives Renilda a yeah. hug too, and then they leave. Uh, as you as you hug, she's like she's taken aback a little bit, but she's like, "Oh, oh, well, thank you." She kind of just kind of pats you on the back a little bit, like you know, Later. like trying not to touch any other way. <laughs> okay, bye, bye. Um, but yeah, so for maps research, everybody can participate. If you'd like to, you can uh, roll an investigation. We'll start with that um, as you're looking around, and then we'll see what you find out. That's fine. Is it? Oh, is it nice. really? <laughs> that's that's a okay. This is just this is just the first hour of trying. Oh, oh. no, it's okay. We don't know Mary. shit. <laughs> Do you want to help them or are you just like, nah, they got this. Roll well, it'll be hilarious. Honest. I mean, it would be very fun. Oh, you know what? I'll try it okay. just to see. She's just like, all right, but... I'll just do it. <laughs> uh, what are we rolling? Investigation? Investigation. Or... Yeah, I, I have an inkling of what that number might be for you. <laughs> well... Yeah. I did get an 18. Yeah. Marion is definitely not fully paying attention. She's like touching and sniffing and like in examining the plant clipping that she mm -hmm. had. She's only half yeah. listening to the two of them. Um, but I'll let you tell me what, sure. what she it's might on a lower shelf. We're like, That's we're looking at all these books. We're trying to match up stuff. We're like, I don't know. Maybe this looks like this. <laughs> like we're like turning and twisting the map and the marriage goes, oh yeah, that's the one thing. Yeah, you actually find uh, in a book that you you were kind of drawn to because it's talking about Yate Veo and their their ecology and where they are. Uh, you find in a book about Yate Veo and, and their kind of uh, poison uh, slash incapacitation uh, abilities, you find a map of where they were. And this map, when you look at it, it reminds you of the older maps that... Aiden has right now because it is of the Ostal or Ostal area to the um oh my goodness west of Laxenloff, kind of in that transition area into Ilmeg where the forest stops being purple. Um okay. so that general area over there with the like tigers almost, you know. Um so over there it is a much more detailed map of that area and you don't notice Ostal imperative there at all. You don't notice an encampment there. What is there instead is a small village with some sort of church, cathedral. You're not entirely sure. So this is like different between the two maps. It's yes. like, or it's. Okay. It looks to be older than. It's definitely older than any current map because Ostal imperative is not there, and it looks to be a more detailed version of the older maps that Aiden is holding. Okay, um, Merit skims over it her mm -hmm. eyes twinkle a little bit and she thunks the book down on the table <laughs> next to the map and says it does seem like if i lick it i probably won't die and she's like gesturing at the at the you know the thing that's wrapped <laughs> yeah. around her she's like i think i might be able to use it in a brew that really knocks something on its ass like just completely out one time we had rats down in the tavern cellar and so rather than trying to, you know, just get rid of them, they were little suckers. I think they might have been infused with the light as well. Real hard to kill. We mm. tried. We tried. I mean, left and right. Couldn't kill them. So instead, we soaked a whole bunch of bread in the strongest alcohol we had. Shitty kind of stuff, you know. So nothing that would be too sad to lose. And the, those little rats, they just ate it right up. And we came down there. They were all just sleeping. We squashed them. Easy. So I'm thinking if I use it. We could do something similar, or I could just lick it and then try to make something that would be a prolific brew as well. And while she's just <laughs> rambling, about yeah. it, she has like scooted the book in just such a way so that like the two maps are side by side <laughs> and that you all can deduce whatever you would like yeah. from that knowledge. 
has been that has been laid out uh all the stuff that aldiano just said yeah. but she is just on a whole other tangent she's like one of them i hit him with my hammer and his little eyeballs right out of its head it's hilarious so, <laughs> into, does yeah. not notice the maps match up because yeah. she is enthralled with the story what about you aiden she's just listening I, I feel <laughs> like i me being the uh the, the the sage background that I mm -hmm. am, uh, I would I would notice the yeah. the map. Yeah. So in in your uh, more researched view, uh, yeah, this is definitely the same area to a different resolution, a little bit zoomed in from this, frankly, throwaway map that uh, one I could find quickly. Um, but this, because it's in a book about ecology and and habitat this specifically shows and you can even see the contours of the hills there um lovingly rendered but as you're looking at it uh you do notice that before all imperative there must have been a small village but the biggest thing on this map looks to be a church of some sign uh, uh, some sort or some sort of religious uh, uh building at the very least because it has these weird uh, parapets um and this kind of temple like drawing um, you see another one of those uh, on this map in general on the opposite side. As you're flipping through the pages, like looking at the pages that are there, there's uh, various cut-ins to places in Lakeland. And the other one that you can see is near the Church of Last Light. Clear on the other side of Lakeland, but it's drawn in a very similar way. So whatever it is, it is some, or whatever it was, because it's clearly not there anymore. It was some sort of site of religious um, importance that is similar to the Church of the Last Light. How I far mean, did the eyeballs go? Eyeballs? Clear uh, across the room. One of them smacked into the wall like a grape. You know, it... They used to they use grapes a lot for wine, though it's been mm -hmm. much harder recently because obviously there's nothing growing. So I think in some regions they still have them. I've heard a wee bit. Would like to try and brew some myself. I love fusion space right now. <laughs> 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 just like <laughs> actually doing quests. <laughs> I kinda just go it's like <clears throat> waiting for them <clears throat> to be done. So yeah. uh, uh -huh. this is <laughs> and I point to the, the map. Mm -hmm. And next to the other map, and I say, this is the same area. Mary grins and goes, oh no, it's the map, did you? And then leaves it very ambiguous just, about whether or not she I just roll <laughs> my eyes. <laughs> um, would, I, would I know anything about the... the Church the, of the First Light. Church of the First Sorry, Light. I said last. I said last, because we're on the first, and I wanted to flip it around. But yeah. That's fair. Yeah, you do... You do know that it is some um, ancient, uh, at least religious site of some pre-existing um, religion, right? Before the Flood of Light. It is completely, just about completely abandoned now, though. Um, you only know a little bit because there's not a lot of history about this, right? It's, it's all been unwritten, unfortunately. But you do know of the landmark because it's kind of one of the places that you can stop if you're going kind of north around Laxon Loft, uh, going up to northern Lakeland and then curving around to get to Austal Imperative, kind of the northern pass through Weathering. Mm -hmm. um, but you don't know too much about it, and mostly it's just the ruin. Um, you're not really aware of anyone using it, per se. Gotcha. I, I relay that to the, to the group. Mm-hmm. Okay, so okay. I I mean, what is what is what does this tell us then? I mean, do we Yeah. Um Yeah. It's something. It's it's um, something. Yeah, so you can you can uh start looking into Laxon Law. You did find something for Austal Imperative, but there's still the Laxon Law map, which uh from these maps, like uh, these cut ins, it looks almost exactly the same as it did, except for you can tell in these maps, looking at the Laxon Loft area, um, that it was much more whole than, um, you know, one, 
it's drawn, you know, not as a ruin. And two, it also has some uh, kind of check, uh, check stations, like uh, uh, gates along the way, kind of on the path down from Lax and Loft that aren't there anymore. But you definitely do know that those are ruins, because you can see them from the ground, kind of the arches that have fallen. Were there any markers or indicators on... So, like, they had these maps mm -hmm. in their cult headquarters, yeah? yes? Mm -hmm. um, were there any markers or indicators of, like, plans being made? Yeah. You know, areas that were circled out of those? There are these areas where we see the differences. Mm -hmm. But do we, like, is there anything indicating, like, yeah. our attention being drawn to something specifically? Yeah, there's, there's some, uh, you know, circled areas there's some dotted lines and things like that it does look like some sort of troop movement maybe um or some sort of like almost treasure map uh idea um so what you can see there is um near the north of the Oslo imperative not where this church looking thing is but in the kind of hilly areas north of it you see that there is a circle on this kind of general area um, you also see a, not an, an X per se, it's, it's got two additional lines. It's a little lopsided, in fact. I'll draw it for you guys. Um, I need to get a handout for it. But it's basically an asterisk, but it's a little lopsided, um, this sort of marking. Um, and it is almost directly center on Lax and Loft. And in between... If you were to put these maps together, you can see that they may be uh, two pictures of a larger hole. Like maybe whoever has made these maps have separated it into quadrants, or more than a quad, but you know what I mean. Separated into sections and then drawn on it, and then given this to people. Um, but the ones that you do have are Laxenloff and Osto Imperative. Nothing 100% lines up with any of the new landmarks that you see on these old maps, but you can definitely tell that. From the old maps, Ostel, that area had a lot more religious uh, implications than anyone knows of right now. Do but, I recognize mm, the symbol? Just like looking at the symbol, does it look like anything that I know about? Uh, it kind of looks like a star, honestly. W would I, I have do know about seen this in any vaguely. books yeah. previously? Yeah. Actually, um, give me a history check. I think you're probably trained in it. Yeah, I have. I think it's knowledge history. I have a plus five to history. Yeah. Hey. Hey. 24. Oh, perfect recall. So you, as you're looking at this symbol, it reminds you of kind of the heraldry of the elven kingdom that used to exist in Laxenloft. And nearby, um, there's another site further south in Lakeland, um, the Grand Cosmos, right? Um, it looks to be kind of one of those heraldric, you know, on a, on a, a flag that you've seen before of an ancient, uh, well, now ancient, because they're all dead, um, uh, maybe family, maybe part of a coat of arms, maybe something related to that. Um, but it's definitely sh uh, chivalric is what I'm trying to say. It's it's related to that history. But you're not entirely sure. Most of those have fallen out. It's probably You've probably seen it in a book somewhere, but it wasn't something that 100% is like, this is this family, or we know a lot about this. It's just you've seen it in a picture or two. Um, you could definitely look into that. Uh, that might take a little bit longer because there's a lot of books. You could, you could potentially ask for help. Um, maybe someone who's an expert in it. But I mean, you definitely yeah. draw an allusion okay. to uh, some sort of knight or heraldry, uh, heraldry from uh, Lax and Loft's history. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I know we're we're getting close on time here too. So I'm like, oh, yeah. I'm like, what do I want to do? <laughs> I think that that's a a good point, actually. Um, yeah. Because we figured out the maps, you have what you need to do next. Now it's figuring out, and this is the falling action here. Um, what do you want to do next? 
do you want to continue researching at, at the start of the next one? Maybe find someone who can help you. Do you want to go check out Spagyrix? Um, if you're going to enact a plan of knocking them out, you have a couple of directions to go. I think I think what I would want to do is find uh, some of the books about like house crests, mm -hmm. and then uh, kind of finish the the looks of the maps yeah. up, and then go and take care of uh, yeah the the yeah. and Drakes. Yeah, I will definitely tell you it's going to take a while to research that heraldry just because it's so fragmented. Uh, maybe maybe well, maybe should... I'll have more and uh, do that while we're yeah. out then. You could. <laughs> I mean, it's true. Me, me and Mar, we go back. We go way back, you know. <laughs> if you wanted to research, I know if we decide to go with the plan of mm -hmm. um, either luring them to a place and then incapacitating them or, like, baiting them mm -hmm. with food and then incapacitating them, I think um, Merit's very interested in trying to maybe go to Spagyrix and uh, try to brew, like, mm -hmm. an ultimate punch-in-the-face kind of brew using this magically enhanced uh, yes and Deccan. yes i love that yes yes that's perfect that's it 100 <laughs> percent. and she wants to try and brew it and uh you know okay. use it maybe for the creatures themselves um okay. i think that's her big goal or use it oh. just to sip and try at some point <laughs> she'll probably I mean, you're definitely gonna try at some point right <laughs> okay cool so those are the two things um anything else as we start up next time this is just so that i can have it all prepared and all that that's it. I think is that's, there anything that's it Zoom you wants to do, or anything you want to take care of business in regards to, or do before we leave? She's just ready yeah. to go do stuff. Maybe yeah, go talk to uh, show Lancel uh, the <laughs> connection they made in the maps. See if they can find anything else uh, yeah. related to that old religion. Yeah, you can always outsource uh, research to him and his helpers as well. I mean, you work for one eye technically, but he also works for you as your adventuring support something mm -hmm. or other. We're gonna go make money. Here's the yep. thing that you wanted to do. Money. Okay, well that's that's great. I think that we succeeded in actually starting it up again. Look at us. What the heck? We did. And the we thing. learned some things. We learned some I didn't, I didn't, I didn't get calls. to I didn't get to use the rope nearly as Whoa. much as I had hoped this time around. But uh, yeah. yeah, the real <laughs> highlight for me of this episode was getting both Aldino and Zanidra mm -hmm. to do a Drake mating call. Oh, so good. I don't think anything will ever top that for me. That was great. I felt really that was. Yeah. Great. I, I can't wait. I can't wait till you try and get the get the Drakes all drunk off of your, your <laughs> custom plant brew while they're lolly and <laughs> It's gonna be a real real fun time over there in Lakeland. Look, it's not a party until you have a dwarven brew. I'm just it's saying. It's true. <laughs> but yeah, so thank you everyone for coming along and watching it and listening to it. This is the first of many that will be coming up. I swear it's happening. It won't take a year before we get to the next one. I promise. True. <laughs> <laughs> we swear. We swear. And we'll be talking about the hot topic, the balance, and all of that kind of stuff. Um, the end game changes that happened next week. So uh, stay tuned because we don't, it's not like we didn't notice it this week. We definitely did. The community's yeah, been no, talking yeah. about it a lot and we'd love it's to talk just, about it too. I've been saying it for 15 years. I'm, I'm kidding. That's hyperbole. I've been saying it since In Walker started. People, are, people are talking worry, about it now. They're like, oh my God, this thing. And all you know is over here like, I've yeah, uh -huh. like I've, but, where you guys been? But yeah, I'm sure there, we'll get into it. I can't wait to get into it because I, yeah. I love when we get into that because we have such differing views. Mm -hmm. I don't know. And, you know, hopefully maybe we'll we'll bring in a guest. We'll see. But yeah, I'll see kick it to you, do. Fusion, for the, the outro. Outro! I don't have it. If you want, we're just going to do all, all four things real quick. You can find me on the internet, Rafflederg, R-O-F-L-D-R-G, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, Zen. Where can people find Hi, it's you? me. Um, I'm on Twitter as Ninja underscore A. I'm on uh, Twitch as Strawberry Bop or plus one shot with um, underscores and also on YouTube with plus one shot with no underscores. I'll do know where can they find you? Here and only here and also uh, plus the word one the number shot, shot the, word. the word. There's underscores in between it sometimes for Twitch. Not you know, for it depends on your mood. If, if you want to add underscores, go yeah, for it. It'll yeah, probably go, do it, it'll take you to something. Don't. Uh, there's a game tonight that I'm not a part of, but it's very nice. cool. Uh, it's D&D &D and Diablo, and it is good. 
Um, but yeah, that's that's it for me. I don't right? like these for like four hours. It's very fun. <laughs> yeah. And Rook. Yes, you can find me on Twitch and YouTube at Rookery, R-O-O-K-U-R-I. You can also find me on my Twitter at Rookery underscore. Uh, I mean, that's pretty much it. But I also do a lot of shout casting. I do podcasting. We just had an episode, actually, uh, that Chris Laverne here in the chat over on EXP. Oh my gosh, what is EXP Radio 14? EXP, remind me here in the chat, Chris, and I can do it because... Uh, ah, lore, 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 lore. EXP Lore 14, new podcast that Chris has just started. We just did an episode, Aldino did an episode previously about uh, world building. My episode, we talked about role playing and characters and what inspires us and why we love doing it in 14 in a lot of different ways, shapes and forms. Um, and yeah, you can always find me doing my content, doing my stuff. And hopefully I will have some upcoming lore videos as well soon here at the end of the year. So uh, we're getting through our Endwalker playthrough, but a lot of more good stuff to come. Mm hmm. If you want, you can contact us just kind of generally. Uh, you can email us at radio at gamerscape.com. You tweet at us at Aetherite Radio. And, of course, you can reach us as Gamerscape on all the things, Twitter, Twitch, YouTube, Facebook, and Discord. Uh, we have an Aetherite Radio channel over uh, uh, discord.g slash Gamerscape. Uh, you can come and, and talk to us about the show or first edition or whatever whatever you want. As long as, you know, you keep it topical to the to the, the the channel that it's in because that's nah, how fuck that it. works say whatever you want it's fine <laughs> just come in come in and, and type how you would odd like how you would like make the drake sound but like just type yeah. it yeah. how is that spelled out yeah yeah that's a good question for the there community we go. how do you spell that <laughs> you 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 i might need a -A 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 -A. I did not expect to have to make a mating call for them to to, to be a hundred percent. No, I could tell as as soon as it. Rook asked that, I, I could just I knew that that was coming from Rook and not yeah. Merit. <laughs> like, just, just the look like, on her face, I could. How tell. dare it's you? Good. How dare you accuse her of being a blender? How dare you? Thank you. Yeah, how very dare you? Yeah. Look, I've done enough theater and enough enough mm -hmm. improv. Yes. In moments to know that sometimes you just have to look at the person that gave you the setup and go, wild. So how does that sound? Would you say? Can you sing a little snippet of that song you just and referenced? The answer What's the is, mating call sound like? And the answer is always yes. I will right make is. that noise. That's right. It is. <laughs> Rule of improv. <laughs> All right. That is gonna do it for us this week, everybody. We'll see you next week. Thanks for hanging out. Bye. Bye.